Today I'm going to talk to you about critical pedagogy. Critical pedagogy is the opposite of what we might call the banking system of education. That's when teachers lecture incessantly without any back and forth or active participation from students. It's like when you deposit money into a bank, but instead you're depositing knowledge into students and then withdrawing it when they take exams. This banking system is bad for a number of reasons. First, it kills students' intrinsic motivation to learn, which is the lifeblood of their education. We've all been in boring lectures. They're boring. But more importantly, it's a lot harder to learn when you're just passively sitting there. Students don't learn as much as they could be in this kind of classroom. One-way lecturing also tends to reproduce social inequalities by teaching students to be quiet and just submit to authority. In other words, the banking system trains students to be obedient workers. Critical pedagogy tries to remedy these problems. So what is critical pedagogy? In a sense, it's anything that isn't the banking system. And there's lots of teaching strategies and exercises you might already be familiar with that can be part of a critical pedagogy. Problem-based learning, dialogue between teacher and student, Socratic method, think pair share activities. Anything that's dynamic, relational, or involves students' active participation. For better or for worse, there's no instruction manual for critical pedagogy, and you're going to want to try lots of tactics to see what works best for you in your classroom. But what really sets critical pedagogy apart from other student-centered learning models is that it seeks to explicitly name and critique power structures. This helps students from diverse communities in particular. The idea is that students are most motivated to learn when their education directly applies to problems they face in their everyday lives. However, Students from diverse and marginalized backgrounds will be impacted by a different set of social problems compared to more privileged students. The challenge of critical pedagogy is to get to know your students, to try to figure out what social problems matter to them the most, and then connect course content to those issues. So one way to do this might be to simply survey students at the beginning of a course. Get their anonymous responses about what current events are impacting their lives, or which social issues matter the most to them. It may take some time to build trust with students so they feel comfortable enough to reveal sensitive information to you as their teacher. But let's say you find out that a student's life has been impacted by mass incarceration somehow. As the semester goes on, you can ask yourself, how might I connect today's lesson to mass incarceration in the United States? Admittedly, some classroom topics might lend themselves to social justice more than others. So a chemistry instructor might have to get more creative than a sociology instructor when it comes to critical pedagogy. Finally, diverse students who struggle in school might not initially see the subtle ways their society works against them. As a result, they may blame themselves as individuals for the challenges they face. But by explicitly naming the systemic roots of their problems, an educator can help students redirect their energies away from harmful self-criticism and towards an education that builds a more inclusive society.